Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Castlevania Lords of Shadow, of all things. I know, right? A storm I'm, is I'm gonna coming. be a warrior. Mankind faces ruin and despair. I'm gonna turn The uh, world this guy is up. changing, yet hope remains in the hearts of the people. Who could he be? We go about our daily lives never knowing the forces that can change our destinies forever. We are oblivious, ignorant like sheep to the slaughter. This night, in the year of our Lord 1047, marks the beginning of our journey together. A journey into darkness, into madness. I watch him from the shadows. Is he the one? He has come far already, but he will be tested, tested to the very limits of human endurance and beyond. This night he rides looking for the old gods, armed with an amulet that has led him here. Tonight he will begin his journey into oblivion. All right. So, uh, that narrator man was uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Oh, let me turn myself back on. There we go. And I feel, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but the last line of his speech is oblivion. Like, he literally says, oblivion. The struggle for supremacy is eternal, inevitable. Creek. I gotta oil this thing. Victory is the natural objective Trusty of Mike Stan has served me for this world. They multiple years now. They and die for their kind to dominate. Some call this eternal struggle. So yeah, much like Oblivion, where uh, Patrick Stewart famously darkness. featured for about five minutes, uh, he also appears in this. I should really have my black eye makeup on. I decided not to put it on, but maybe I'll put it on mid-video. That'd be kind of funny, right? So, um, I may have even alluded to this in the past, but I was thinking These about starting up a um, times without playthrough of Death's Gambit. Men of faith claimed that after this is a Unworthy test didn't work out because Unworthy just kind of wasn't that good, and perhaps then I was like, well, maybe I should play Code Game. And then I like changed gears completely, and I was like, I want to play Titanfall. If it is true, and I was like, well, I also am playing two, come to engulf one's proud you know, first-person shooters. And we are if I play Titanfall the and then I go right to, or I play Hedden and then I go right to Titanfall, I'll be like double dipping. Maybe that's not something I want to do. Sorry, I just washed my hair, so it's extra uh, uncontrollable, you know? Uh, but I was like, well, Titanfall 2 campaign is really, really good. So I downloaded it, 63 gig. I booted it up, and it said, hey, fuck you, and install Origin. And I was like, ugh. I was like, I do want to play a Souls-like. And then I was like, you know what I actually want? I want something gothic. So hey everyone, let me welcome you to Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. The obnoxious reboot of Castlevania. Um, I don't know why this was a thing, but in the 2013s, multiple Japanese game studios decided to reboot their legendary uh, IPs and franchises for kind of no reason, you know? Um, sometimes it was a very soft reboot. Like, for example, Resident Evil 7 is kind of like a reboot. Hey, you play God of War? It's this. Um, sorry. Soft reboots and hard reboots. Like, for example, the, the Devil May Cry reboot, DMC Devil May Cry, rather famously is a very extreme reboot and uh, really sucks. But they tried their hand at this. Konami, famously not a particularly awesome company. We're like, you know what? Castlevania now has about 100 games in it. And Iga got a hold of the franchise... I think his real name is Koji Igarashi. But almost everyone just calls him Iga. Uh, but Iga got a hold of the franchise and did a whole bunch of stuff to canon. And like, we fired Iga. We don't know what the hell we're doing. So I guess we'll just reboot Castlevania, right?
Um, so in the 2000s, God of War, of course, came out. And God of War kind of changed the face of, like, beat-em-ups and character action games. <laughs> because, like, the idea of just giving your character a moveset that lets them deal with huge packs means that you can have very, very dynamic and awesome scenes where you have a whole bunch of, you know, packs of enemies fighting you. And, like, Kratos is built from the ground up to let that happen. He's a very small, like... Tiny warrior compared to compare Kratos to like a Lords of the Fallen character or like sorry I'm just thinking of like really huge guys Kratos is actually pretty small he's kind of wiry you know do a travel book use it to buy combat moves and abilities check your inventory discover information about Castlevania and inhabitants hey yada yada yada. Press and hold square while airborne. Word. Oh, wow. Y A, X A. Hold on, what's this one again? Let me relearn this. Um. So yeah, rather famously, God of War came out and kind of completely changed everything forever. Because it was fucking God of War, and it's really good. But more importantly, a lot of people saw that and were like, we could do just that, right? Couldn't we? This actually looks pretty good. I do like the hybridization of like the classical gothic Castlevania art that you would get in like the NES era. And the very, very Bishonen anime boys that Ayame Kojima draws. I don't think that she's on this game. I do think Hideo Kojima was on this for some reason. A big wolfie. Oh man, that's gonna take some getting used to. Oh yeah, I can do this, can't I? So like, you look at games that came out after God of War and like, There's a lot of stuff that, like, should not be God of War, and yet it is. The 3D Prince of Persia game, released in, I believe, 2004, which is rather annoying to talk about, because it's not the only game called Prince of Persia, and it's not even the only game called Prince of Persia 3D, so most people typically just refer to it by its helpful subtitle, Sands of Time. Um, but Sands of Time is really good. And then Warrior Within, the sequel, is less good. And then so they kind of tried to course correct with the third game, and I don't actually remember the name. Uh, the Two Princes? Something like that? Nice. Classic. Um, and that game, which does not have... Like, that franchise initially did not have very much combat to begin with. And it was very simple, button mashy combat. Um, and, like, I almost feel like more focus was put on avoiding enemies and getting away from them. Because you have such good control of time in that game. But the third game in that trilogy has a shitload of God of War-style combat. I am Gabriel. Like, you randomly get a whip. I, you get like, I think you can get, like, a tank. No, not a tank. You get, like, a tattoo, like a tribal order? tattoo, like you would have in Warrior hey, Within. And it just gives you, How do um... I find him? He... <laughs> he will find you. In the forest. Um, it gives you, like, a travel tattoo that turns into a whip and, like... Whatever. Let's change gears and talk about Sonic. You guys see Sonic 2? 
But um, Sonic famously often don't have very good games. After 3D became the norm, Sonic was not very much able to, um, you know, transition cleanly. So, Sonic's a little, uh, you know? Um, and one of the problems is that I defeated nine lesser lycanthropes and one great varg. I found some silver daggers. Oh, what's happening? Okay, cool. We're good. Spinning a chain, spinning a chain. All right. We'll go and get more red orbs or whatever. Finish the level, defeat the Great Warg with one surviving villager. Ooh. How do I go back? I don't want to do this one. I follow him into okay. the old forest, watching. I'll turn Patrick Stewart up and then I'm gonna talk about he Sonic is more. Strong indeed. The one god comes to drive out the many, but here, in this place, God's influence is thin and threadbare. The old gods still hold sway here. Few venture this far into the wood. He is disturbed by dreams, dreams that gnaw at his very soul. He will rest for the night, but rest will not come easy. The battle has left him weakened, but he knows the dream will return, and though he fears nothing on this earth, yet his nightmares sap the strength within him and leave a cold grip on his heart. Tomorrow he will use the old hunting path. Long has it been in disuse, but for now, he dreams. Okay. Thank you, Patrick Stewart. Um, so, like, Sonic games famously are kind of hard to develop because in 2D, it's actually pretty easy to develop Sonic, relatively so. What motivates a man to confront the um, challenges that most of us would run from? It's relatively easy to develop Sonic to when solitude. it's in 2D, but in 3D, Exposing the world gets so much huger, and, like, to make a game that is fun to run through and adventure in is, like, really, really hard. Um, and you can see this with a lot of Sonic games. That's why a lot of Sonic games put the you on a very small track as though they're still a, a linear so 2D game that you control just in 3D. Um, this is used pretty things, well in like Sonic Generations or arguably Sonic Forces. Loss of love can make a man desperate. Um, desperate enough to do anything to bury the truth. And like, I can't think of, off the top pain. of my head, I can't think of a huge, like, properly open world Sonic game. There's that Doom wad that makes you play like Sonic, and it really plays poorly. But one of the things about, like, making a map like that is that you put in so much more work for not that much more out in terms of gameplay. And like people still just like Here having you seek the guardian of the lake. I will take you to him, but we must this be quick. Like... Climb onto my back. Hurry. I will answer I will ask no questions. Has Belmont even said something yet? Goodness. Anyway, um Oh, you can tell that this horse is good because it's white and blue. And these guys are black and red. Uh, ride horse. I love this move in every Castlevania game. It feels like somebody whipping like a uh, like a T-shirt, you know. Did I do something wrong? Konami. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, whatever.
So, like, what are you going to do? You're going to develop just a huge Sonic game? Just a huge, gigantic, super fuck-off big Sonic game? Or you could try slowing Sonic down. So in Sonic Unleashed, Sonic rather famously uh, gets, like, turned into a thing called a Werehog, which is actually a werewolf-hedgehog thing. Even though the name Werehog should mean that he's, like, you know, a pig. Like, a man that turns into a pig. Because, like, a were-rat is a guy that turns into a pig. And a werewolf is a guy that turns into a wolf. Styling. But, and a werehog should be a guy that turns into a pig. You know, like, not a... Not something that is, like... A pig, uh, uh, not not a, a hedgehog that turns into a werewolf. You know, I know that that's a relatively small problem to have with Sonic the Sonic the Hedgehog Unleashed, but and like those, but anyway, yeah. So you turn into a werehog, and in addition to that, you also get stretchy arms, almost like a One Piece Luffy. Oh, that was my health being low. Whoops. Can I have... Thank you. You know what? Enemy infighting is always good. Ooh, bad dodge. And, like, if you were to just play all of the fast-running, like, Sonic levels, the game would be a lot better. And it's weird that they make you, you know, play the Werehog levels and other things, like the, uh... Like the Tails airplane levels, or, like, walking around and talking to, like, vaguely racist NPCs. But whatever, I'm not a game de developer, so what would I know, Sega? But it's very transparently like, we make all these huge levels and nobody spends any time in them because it's a Sonic game, and like, it was built from the ground up to be played as fast as it possibly could be. So obviously everyone's going to spend a very small amount of time in a Sonic game. So what if we just design something to slow it down and force you to spend more time? And like, that sucks, that is extremely lame, and like, it's a really boring game, you know? Like, it just is pretty boring. Because like, the fast Sonic levels can actually be pretty exciting, although there are some fucked up things about fast Sonic, but the Werehog levels are just really boring. Um, two best friends play uh, started it, but it's actually one of the games that they famously never completed. They beat almost every game that they ever started, and they only had uh, like I five LPs that they didn't no finish. You will find what you seek ahead. Uh, but I can also recommend. I guess I could recommend the Game Grumps playthrough. It's a pretty good playthrough, as Game Grumps go. All right, this is going on a little too long. Island. So, um, I played the first two Castlevania games on my channel, which you're watching this on, presumably. Why did you download this? Oh, man. That cutscene. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I played the first two Castlevanias. Uh, Last Halloween? Oh, new combos available. Am I just going to have to look at all these just to get them off? Whatever. Fine by me. Whatever. I don't care.
Um, I love Castlevania. Oh, and that's such a, that's so cool looking. Like, that might just be repurposed concept art, but like, that's such a cool way to do this. But anyway, I can admit that like, at some point, there's a lot of Castlevania that we, you wouldn't know about. And like, Alone what's... Alone again, with only his uh, thoughts as company. Let me turn up Patty Stewart again. on his journey to find the one he seeks. Who or what was that strange creature? There is a power here that few know, a power that could have some influence on events. Perhaps the Guardian of the Lake is aware of him now and offers aid in his quest. There is just the small matter of the dead bog to overcome, a place that has claimed the lives of many of the Brotherhood. The smell of death is strong here, and danger lies around every corner, but nothing will stop him. Nothing will stand in his way. We done? Cool. These don't add that much. Like, they kind of just break up the game in a way that I don't like, but... Let's, let's catch the audience up on Castlevania, right? So one of the things about Castlevania is that, like, the NES games are pretty simple, you know? Hey, you know what a blue orb is? It's this. The NES games have very simple stories. Um, and it's only when you get to... Okay, cool. It wasn't letting me move for a sec there. It's only when you get to, um, like, a little past uh, the SNES era that the stories start to become complicated. But part of that is because they did not have... Belmont, what are you doing? What could it possibly be? I guess it's like the year a thousand and they wouldn't know, you know? Nah, he knows. I just think that it's funny. Uh, yep. Mm hmm. I think it's funny that he'd be like, what could this be? Is it a candle? <laughs> Do I whip it? Um, so yeah, like the first three Castlevania games are only on the NES. So if you have a NES, you have the ultimate Castlevania machine. Don't worry about it. And then you got four on the SNES. And then you have the bad port of five on the SNES. But it's really on a console that I don't even know if it was released in the States. It was on the um, PC Engine, I want to say. Why did I set up my tent next to the swamp of bad guys? That's what he's thinking. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the start of the big problem with Castlevania's story. You would get, you know, Simon Belmont's uh, story if you played every NES and SNES game. And then you would miss out on who Richter Belmont is. You wouldn't really know about him, you know? Speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog wanting to slow it down, hey, how about we slow this down, right? Like, I can't dodge roll through this. I can't, like, jump out of it. I just have to wade very slowly. It's not, like, particularly fun. It's just slow, kind of boring. And they put it right at the start again. Like, we did a, a short, kind of crappy tutorial level. And then we did a, another really short level. And, like, we've gotten so much Patrick Stewart monologuing. And, like, ugh. You know? Just, ugh. But anyway, um... Guys, hold on. I'm examining this Fallen Knight's corpse. Yeah. 
You know what? That's cool. I'll say it. Can I look a little more down here, guys? No? Okay. Uh, but this is the start of the problem. Castlevania has, like, this weird trifurcation. Uh, and, like, you get so much different stuff on so many different consoles, and, like, it's really just kind of annoying. Like, you miss out on things for not ho owning every console. And, like, I don't know why they would do that. Like, if Konami wants to sell Castlevania, why wouldn't they make it widely available? And, like, it's Konami, so, like, whatever. Whoops, facing the wrong way. Pardon me, fellas. Get a few grabs in. Remind myself that I'm supposed to be a grappler. You know. Um. So, like, Castlevania 4 is only on the SNES. Castlevania 5 has a bad port on the SNES, but is only, you know, really playable on the PC Engine. The Turbo Graphic 16, I think it's called. Um. And it later did get some ports, but not only would you not know what the hell's going on without that, you would be lost for Symphony of the Night. You know? Yes, guys. The goblin grenade has uprooted the tree sentences you can only hear in Castlevania, right? What happened there? Cool. So yeah, like Castlevania 4 is only on the SNES. Castlevania 5 is only on the Turbo Graphics. It's only good on the Turbo Graphics at least. Um, and Castlevania 6 was only on the Genesis. Castlevania 6 also famously does not have any Belmonts. It has a dude who I think was initially supposed to be like Alucard's descendant or reincarnation before they just brought him back. Um, and like a weird bastard offshoot of the Belmont family. Like he's literally a bastard. His last name is Morris, but he does have Belmont blood. It's kind of weird, you know? Can I get this off my screen? I can't, thank you. Um, and then, like, most people don't even count that game, which I believe is called Castlevania Bloodlines, but for God's sakes, it's a Castlevania game with blood in the title. How could you possibly remember all of them and tell them all apart? Um... And then, like, Symphony of the Night is its own thing. And it's, like, what most people would actually consider to be Castlevania VI. That looks important, so I'm going to go to this thing first. If you don't mind. Oh, there was a grenade over there, and it went away. They don't normally do that, though, right? Grenades. Kind of famous for going away pretty loudly and not quietly. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, most people don't even count Bloodlines, and, like, didn't for a while, and would only have counted it, uh, like, would only have counted Symphony of the Night as, like, the loose Castlevania Six. And, like, that didn't even stop the problems of like bifurcating the series because like Symphony of the Night is maybe the best Castlevania game. Some people consider that's where Castlevania starts. Those people are wrong. Um, 
And to some people, like, Symphony of the Night is where it ends. Like, play the NES games, play the SNES game, and play Symphony, and then stop. And, like, I think that that's nuts, but whatever. Um, and, like, that's the game where you have some, you know, classic 2D Castlevania, but they also reclaim the Good Metroidvania people. title. But my need is far greater than yours. Because, you know, Metroid obviously invented the genre Metroidvania by drawing inspiration from Zelda. And then Castlevania 2 showed up a little afterwards and was a kind of bad version of Metroidvania, you know? Use all this ancient Uncharted technology. Man, if there was a game that made me want to be a Catholic, it's Guilty Gear and this. Oh, so cool. Hook tip. Relic was built by the renowned artisan Ronaldo Gandolfi. Uh, Ronaldo G Gandolfi, I think, is the wizard who builds the original alchemical whip that becomes the vampire killer in Lament of Innocence, I want to say? It's like deep ancient Castlevania lore. A uh, metal tip can grip objects and enemies from distance, giving you Snatch from Devil May Cry 4. Like, look, it's it's literally Grim Grip from DMZ4. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, like, there's two? Castlevania 64 and Castlevania Curse of Darkness? I don't remember the other Castlevania game. The N64. Robert, my good friend Robert, my best friend, along with Aaron Quentin, of course. Um, but like, Robert loves that game, and I've actually been meaning to let's play it with him. Like, if I let's play anything with him, it's probably gonna be that game. Because he loves it, and I'm interested in it, but I have no, like, ability to play it because I don't have an N64. And I don't want to learn to play a game with a bad control scheme and, like, look, he's been playing it since he was a kid, so whatever. He can he can feel this one. Robert, if you're watching, play Castlevania 64 with me. Or whatever the one you like is. Because I know that there's two on the N64. And the other thing is, is that, like... Castlevania was already about the, you know, Belmont bloodline. Because you get Simon in the first two games, and then you get Trevor in the third game, and then Richter in the fifth. But then, like, with bloodlines, they start to introduce... Ooh, that's really sweet. That feels good. That actually feels really good. Oh, yeah, I've got these. Why don't I solve a few problems with that, huh? See, this is one thing that's missing from Dark Souls. You do not get the ability to style that hard in Dark Souls. And, like, I know it's because you're fighting almost, like, shoot style, but, like, fuck, I want to style on dudes. I love Devil May Cry. Let me style. Oh, and he gets his health back. Damn. Pretty good camera angle. Sorry, I'm focusing in hardcore. But anyway, yeah, after Bloodlines, they start to not only, like, move away from the concept of, like, following just the Bloodline, but they also have other guys. Like, there's a werewolf dude. I don't even know what his name is. I remember that's a pretty cool name. And, like, I think there's only one guy who's actually bloodline descendant of the Belmonts. The Brotherhood Ark. Like, holy shit. It's very, very deep. It's very... Almost overly complicated, I would say. With just how there's just a lot of... 
Silver daggers. Uh, they have small bones of saints hidden in their grips. Saint bones. Interesting. Uh, destructive power. Uh, they're made of silver and they have the bones of saints. Uh, both characteristics give the weapon its destructive powers against supernatural beings, especially those descendants of the Lycanthrope Dark Lord. This is just lore. Heck, I know that I'm going to die, but at least it'll be finding. Heck isn't exactly what I would imagine a, you know, hardened veteran would use. God, it's just Grim Grip from DMC4. But anyway, so, um, I'm trying to think of where, what even happens next in Castlevania. Oh, yeah, they make this, like, almost, like, I think it's, like, a company-wide decision that, like, Iga, who worked on Symphony of the Night, gets all the, all the, um, portable games. Um, and it's just going to be, like, Nintendo portable games. And then all the console games are going to be 3D. Is there a reason I need to... Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Pretty clever, actually. Not bad at all. So, like, you get the, the PS2 and the Xbox games. And, like, some of those have interesting concepts. Like, hey, what if we had a 3D game with Pokemon collecting elements? Well, I was down here, shouldn't I? Maybe that's like a shortcut back. Can I jump this way? No. Oh, I see. We did not feel good about that jump. <laughs> Damn, that's not cool. Oh, that's okay. Um, so yeah, and then the Game Boy games all start to introduce, like, new mechanics. Like, hey, what if you collected souls? Or what if you collected cards and you could, like, combine two cards and get, um... I don't actually want that. Like, what if you collected a whole bunch of cards? And, like, what if you could combine two cards and get a unique cool power? And, like, that's a cool idea. I like that, actually. I like it a lot. Um, or what if you were also playing a Pokemon game and, oh, these animations are so clean. I guess I'll grab this. I got the money, right? <laughs> grab it. Whatever. All right. Got to remember that I have that. The stench of the bog I'm fades turn into up Patty. memory and the land of great beauty lies before him. A paradise where nature lives in harmony with all living creatures. Indeed, a refuge for those who wish it. He is close now, close to the old gods and the old ways. Long forgotten by men, this kingdom was once revered by all. Yet now only a small part remains. Soon even this will disappear. The amulet senses its master. Its journey is almost over. He will need all his strength now, all his wits. If he is to succeed here, if he is to convince the old god to help him. It's so weird. Like, I'm literally, I literally feel like I'm just waiting for him to stop talking. What is its purpose? What could it mean?
so yeah, like the three Game Boy games introduced like mechanics like what if you collected Pokemon and it was just like the dead angry souls of all the monsters that live in Dracula's castle and that's cool. Or what if you um like had uh twenty four cards, two sets of twelve, and you could combine them and of course my brother lie everywhere. I know there's a life gem nearby, I can sense it. Go ahead and pause this if you want to actually read it. Alright. Do, 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 do. Can I see a little better, guys? I got another stick here. Could I use it? Is that all right? Is this the thing I need? It looks like the thing I need. Guess not, though. Oh, I see. They're huge and glowing. Uh, Game Boy Mechanics. So yeah, one of them is, is like, what if you collect Pokemon? One of them is you have this mix and match ability set. And then one of them is, what if you decorated a room with furniture? Like, there's straight up a furniture collecting and... and Metrovania. There's straight up a, a furniture collecting and interior decoration minigame, which is kind of weird. And for whatever reason, that made Juiced Belmont one of the greatest five. His name's Juiced. It's French. It's where a lot of the Frenchiness come in. It's probably the most French Belmont I know. All right, I hope I didn't miss one. Oh, I didn't. Good. Really stellar level design there, guys. What? Oh, do I just have to match it up to what I have over here? Okay, then I gotta get my squigs. <laughs> Thank you, random World of Warcraft character. Um, and then the DS, like, one of the DS games is, dir is a direct sequel. One of them goes, I feel, completely off the rails. I think that's Order of Ecclesia. Uh, and one of them is like, what if you had two characters? And also, a lot of Castlevania was not in Castlevania. Wouldn't that be crazy? Um, and, like, you have Castlevania without Dracula and a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Um, and I actually do want to LP all of those games because I like the um, portable Castlevania games. And then, again, they bifurcate it. If you have a portable console... You can't play any of the 3D games, and if you have a a you know regular console, you can't play any of the portable games, any of the 2D ones. That said, it's a little more justifiable because I feel like it's not crazy to say, you know, someone would own a portable console and a regular console, a handheld and a standard one are pretty normal things to have both of. Um, Show yourself. But it meant that, like, the there's just a whole lot of Castlevania games. Like, the reason that Kingdom you. Hearts has very, very complicated and silly lore I know who you are. is because you need to play every Kingdom Hearts game to know. I am oh, this guy's design's great. Of you need to play every Kingdom Hearts game, but they're split across, like, the, the DS and I think the PSP where? and the PS2 are and the PS3 and happening in the, world? the Game Boy Advance and... The 3DS, and like, if you don't have all of those consoles, get fucked, you we won't know what's going on in Kingdom God. Hearts. And it's why Creatures so many people are confused about Kingdom Hearts. Um, because every Castlevania game is meant to be standalone, it's not so and bad. What do the elders of your order? What do they think? But that's basically the thought us. process and why they wanted to reboot it. They also, I think they were firing Iga, and he was going to go to work on Bloodstained, and Bloodstained turned out to be awesome. Thank you very much. Um, I've actually LP'd the first Bloodstained game. And allowing evil to flourish unchecked. Why have the Brotherhood of Light sent But that's why we've rebooted the lake this. Of oblivion. They have dreamt that a message waits for me at this lake. So yeah, Gabriel has been looking for this old god because we've been cut off from like the Judeo-Islamic like instructed to see Yehovah, like Yahweh, like that path. guy. 
the elders and that's a cool idea. That like clerics being severed from God is a heavens, and concept I've seen used in a few D and D adventures I've, I've of. played in or, or read it? about. Yes, my wife. But like Marie, the straight up over God, like the the, the monotheistic, Judeo-Islamic Jehovah, like. That's like a Shin Megami Tensei story. That's really fucking that cool. Why they sent you to the and the idea that, like, because hey, I know we're Catholic and all, but we need to go find the pagan heathen shit gods. To deliver a message you know? To you. Yes. You know those cultures that we annihilated? We, we gotta go find them and play nice, because our god isn't answering our calls. Are worthy of speaking to the dead? Are you worthy, Gabriel? I'm gonna let this cutscene finish up, and I'm gonna cut the episode. Uh, yeah, I actually, like, the reason that I'm not playing Castlevania 3 is because, first and foremost, Castlevania 3 is hard, and I was kind of burnt out on playing NES games. Um, I also didn't really want to buy the, um, la-di-da, Mr. Belmont gets to talk to his wife. I also, um, haven't bought the, uh, the Castlevania, like, Supermax pack yet. And then, um, Matt Mega Muscles did a video on this a couple of months ago, and I was like, you know what, fuck, this game actually is pretty good. Maybe I'll buy it. And I did, and, like, it went on sale, I picked it up, whatever. And, like, you know what, it's actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little break, I'm gonna put my eye makeup on, um, cause I need to be properly emo for Castlevania, and we'll come back in. Uh, but I've been Alfred, this has been Castlevania Lords of Shadow, and the Steam release is actually really solid. Um, I mentioned that I didn't play Titanfall because it wanted me to install Origin. And, like, fuck that, fuck EA. But also, this game booted up. It runs so simply. It runs very well. Just, mwah. But, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. This has been Lords of Shadow. Everyone have a good day. Thank you for coming. Bye.